Should I throw an exception or return an error? That's a question that I often get. So in this video, I will share with you my simple rule to decide when to return an error or throw an exception in the context of validations. And by the end, I will show you a practical example on how to apply that rule. But first, let's give some more context why this rule is important. If you are a .NET developer, you know that exceptions have a penalty to your applications. Besides that, the name exception leads us to understand that it's something that wasn't expected. It's something that for some reason happened, but it was not supposed to. So now we can pick that information and drive from that to the place where we want to be. Because not all validations are unexpected things. Often they are expected. We know that they might happen. We know that somehow someone can get into the place where that rule is activated and now we are returning an exception, we are returning an error. So the way that I see it is that our applications have several layers of defense. And when those layers are close to the user, we want to return with a proper message, something that eventually might need localization, whatever. But we don't throw an exception there. That's our first layer of defense. If for some reason, the code goes through that first layer of defense, and gets into a second rule where that thing shouldn't happen. The first layer of defense should catch that. So now we need to do something with that. Is it worthy to repeat the process of returning an error message to the outside? Or since that was not supposed to happen, why don't we throw an exception? Based on this idea of the two layers of defense, now we can define our simple rule. And our simple rule is this. Validation errors are for users. Validation exceptions are for developers. That means that a validation error will happen at the edge, as close as possible to the user. Once we get out of that, once we go through that port and it's validated, we say that, okay, there's nothing wrong here. Now we are in the developer space. So that means that if something goes wrong now, it means that somehow we developers, we have done something wrong or something happened that no one was thinking about. So if we forgot something and we got into that situation, let's throw an exception. As you can see, the rule is quite simple, but now let's see some tactical approaches to apply this in your source code. Most applications can be defined this way. We have a central part of our application where we have most of our code and we define a layer of communication with the outside world. Then inside of this, inner circle, we can have different things inside. We can have other inner circles. So now when you look at this, you can map this to a lot of architecture styles like clean architecture, or for example, hexagonal, onion, and so on. So the number of things that you have inside of this circle here doesn't matter for the fact, but we can say that this is the entry point to the important part of our application. So when the user performs a request, we can have our validations right here at the gate. And if it happens right here, it means that we return an error. If for some reason we get inside of this, all the code that lives inside of this circle can throw an exception. So now that means that if you map this to clean architecture, as an example, we can say that we have our domain, the domain as the application around it. And then we have the infrastructure parts. And part of that is our UI, or it can be an API, it can be whatever. So that means that we can perform our validations that will return errors instead of exceptions, either here, 
at the gate of our application or inside of this slice. Once we get into our domain, for example, it's completely fine to throw an exception if something happened, but we are not expecting it. Let's take a look into the code. Here we have a simple application that creates a to-do into a database. And on that application, we have the endpoint of our API. And inside of it, we'll find the core. The core has the application codes, the application services that will handle that request. So in the way that this code is structured, this is the gate to the rest of the code. Those handlers, though that application code, can use this domain. So that means that according to our rules, I can say that in this application, everything that happens inside here might throw an exception and everything that happens around here can return an error. And how is this thing in practice? Let's take a look. If we are working in our domain object, the to-do object in this case, and we need to perform validations like this one, for example, is the ID the valid one? Is it provided? Um, or for example, am I updating the title? But I got an empty title, so that was not supposed to happen at this point in time. That means that it's a developer problem. So a developer forgot to validate that in the first layer of defense. So it's perfectly fine to throw an exception in this situation because it's not supposed to happen. But the user of my API can call the API and send the title as empty. On that case, what I need to do is in my application code, I can always do the check and if the title is empty, I can return an error message. And how do I do that? I can apply the result pattern. By the way, if you are not familiar with it, please leave a comment and I will make sure that I have a video on it. So with the result object, what I'm doing is basically saying this thing either went well and here is your response object or something went wrong and here is why. So that means that this is in fact something that I expect to happen. And if I expect to happen, then on the layer above the one that will communicate with my user, I can pick that and decide the status code that I, that I need. So to show you that in action, if we run this API and then we can perform some requests, for example, the success case, everything goes well. But then I have the scenario of the ID with an error. So if I post the ID, what I will get is that message that I decide to provide when I'm creating um, a new to-do and I do that validation check in my application code. But we have another case here. I don't have the validation for the scenario of the ID being empty. So the ID empty in the case of a uh, quid can be this. So that means that if I post this, what will happen is that it will not be catched by the handle. So the developer forgot to have a validation in place to catch that scenario. And then I will try to create in fact a to-do with the empty ID so it will throw an exception. So if I run this, I have the exception. And this is important, why? Because now I can have observability in place, I can see the exceptions there. I can then follow through those exceptions and understand that this happened and it might happen. And it means that now I need to go back to my code, to my application code and treat that with the proper error message. So if I got into an exception, it means that something is wrong on the first layer of defense. And since you might be asking, what about fluent validations? Let's see how that plays a role in code like this. Fluent Validations is a famous library to perform validations, and it can be used in several different ways. For example, a common way to use it is in the context of Mediator. You might see it being used in the context of your API. So we can push that first level of defense to the API itself and validate it right there. As an example, here I'm using a minimal API. So that means that in my endpoint, when I'm defining my minimal API endpoint, I get my validator 
and then I can call please validate. And if it's not valid, I will return a validation problem with those errors. So that means that I, now I can avoid the work of doing this right here. So I applied Fluent Validations and pushed that first layer of defense into my API endpoint. Another way to do it is to use the Fluent Validations as well, but instead of applying it in the API itself, apply it right here. How can we do it? So instead of getting the validator here, we can, in our handler, get that through injection, add it to a private field, and now this code that is here can remove it from here, go back to our handler, our application code, call the validator, and now instead of returning these results that comes from the API itself, the minimal APIs, what we do is to return a result dot failure, and to the failure we can return the validation result dot to string. We can also create an overload to provide, for example, the dictionary that came first, but this is a possibility. So once we have that and we run our API again, we can perform those requests once again, and we'll see that the successful case, it's okay. The exception is still there. I didn't change anything regarding that. And the title error is coming, but this time is being defined by the, the definition of that validator that we have for Fluent Validations. So now that I'm seeing those exceptions happening, a developer forgot something, I can go back to my validators and then reach the rule. And once I run my exception scenario, now it will return a proper error message. This is my simple rule to decide if I want to throw an exception or return an error. But now I would love to hear from you. Do you agree with this rule? Do you have a different approach to it? please let me know in the comments. And even returning errors, you still want to have exception handling in place. And that's why you want to watch this video right here, where I show you how to have exception handling in place in .NET 8.